I am a global citizen. I'm part of a movement of young people wanting to bring change to our world. A lot of people in this country are part of that community as well. The face of engineering is changing and evolving. But who are the faces behind it, and more specifically, the women? Let us take you on a journey of an exciting career that celebrates success and embraces failure. I'm your host, Ganan Admu, and together with The Common Room, we bring you the face of engineering. Today, I'm in conversation with Dr. Yawande Akinola, MBA. Well, my name is Yawande Akinola, and I'm an engineer, I'm an innovator, and a dreamer. I work in the construction industry as an innovation lead. You know, I love, I love the fact that you include the dreamer. What does that all mean? Just transforming myself to the world of possibilities pretty much every single time. Um, so when things seem impossible, really just taking myself out of that space that suggests that things are too big or impossible and really transforming my, my, my mental you know, space into uh, one that allows me to imagine what is possible. You know what? I feel like I need to steal that. I need to steal. (laughs) I love it. I love it because Uh, you know what? You can have it. You can have it. All yours. (laughs) Because you know what? We a lot of us as we grow grow older, we forget we forget that it's it's possible to dream and 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 achieve. You know, we really do. That's what the world is all about, isn't it? It really is. And sometimes, especially as black women, we forget that. We Mm, forget. We really do. Yeah, so, yeah. And but you know what you forgot to add to 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 your um introduction there, your doctor Yawande Akanola. <laughs> <laughs> well, um so I'm a, I'm a visiting professor at the University of Westminster. Um also I guess a chartered engineer. Um and yeah, sometimes I know titles like <laughs> Sometimes I, I'm, I'm, yes, a little bit uncomfortable with titles, yeah, because they're either limiting or they open opportunities, and it's, it sometimes depends. But yes, um, yes, I, I, I love the fact that um, I'm able to spend time with like super creative minds um, at universities. So, was you always attracted to engineering? Well, um, not always, to be honest. Um, for a very long time architecture was my thing. Um, I was going to become an architect. You know, I spent so many hours as a young child building models of, you know, dream homes um, in my mom's living room. And, And literally just before I started to apply to universities, she came into my room and said, one day, why don't you consider engineering? Um, And I was pretty much like one of those teenagers that just went, you know what, gosh, I'm just going to do it. Apply to, you know, a university, one or two to study engineering just to make her happy. Um, And then I'll apply to the other universities to study architecture. Um, And then I got a place um, to study an engineering degree that had a massive bias towards developing countries and I think that for me was it because it just showed me the practical side to engineering it was love at first sight to be honest well you know what it's interesting you say that because well interesting about your mum actually saying why don't you try engineering because a lot of the ladies I've spoken to so far have said how you know when they decided to go into engineering their parents were, were were like, well, you know, I don't think that's the right step to go because, or the right direction, because you're not going to be able to find a husband. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's like a barrier to marriage. You know, no man wants a woman who's more intelligent than him. And, they, you know, and they found that they were saying, well, I don't care. The right man will come along eventually. So, yeah. you know, it's interesting, you know, that you say that. But, you know, in, in the spaces that you've been in or the other women that you've come across, have they had similar barriers? from parents or maybe just life oh yes you know like I I speak to a lot of young ladies and you won't believe the number of times I hear oh I don't think you know 
I should become an engineer because my parents don't think I should be. There's just this perception issue, you know? I mean, for a lot of people, parents are extremely supportive and, you know, um, teachers in school are extremely supportive, um, but there are still huge, massive perception issues. Um, and actually with my mom, I don't know, I think my mom secretly wanted to become an engineer, you know, like I, I think also she was influenced by her father who was an incredible engineer. Um, and, and so, you know, because she had that insight, you know, because she saw the fact that it was really creative and she saw that I was creative or I enjoyed being creative. And actually that is my message, you know, really to anybody out there, like in any parent, if you recognize that your child, you know, is creative and you know, it really enjoys building stuff, problem solving, um, really the best thing you can do for them is to let them express that creativity, um, even if it's through engineering. You know what, it's it's crazy you say that because um day before yesterday I was having a conversation with my little boy who's nine oh. and you know, and he's you know, he's very imaginative, he's very creative, he loves water, he loves you know, he loves building things. However, he he's yes. not really a fan of maths right now. And we were watching TV and one of the guys on on, on the on the show was an underwater yeah. robotics yeah. engineer. And Brilliant. we were both watching it and he said, Mummy, that looks cool. And I said, it, <laughs> I said, it really does. And that was me. I was like, because I wanted to be an engineer myself, oh, you know, but I got oh, put wow. off. I really got put it's off. It's not too late, you know, <laughs> it's not too late. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and, and in my head, I'm like, I'll, I'm like thinking when you said it, it could have been your mum thinking living her engineering dreams through you. I'm thinking yeah. this is going to be me, you know, living my engineering dreams <laughs> through my son. Time. God, imagine traveling around the world and you're underwater and building mm-hmm. things. And, and he was like, yeah, yeah. So I'm feeling what you said then. I'm absolutely... <laughs> I would love to talk to him because he just needs to get past the maths. Yes. You know, he just needs to, like, it's not so difficult, literally. Like, he just needs to give it what it wants, you know, till he gets to, like, his first year of university. And actually, it gets easier i promise you it does you know um you know like i guess there are different levels to maths and some people go into like the really 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 difficult path parts of maths but like the engineering bit i promise you it's not that hard see you will yeah. have to talk to him you really I will, will. You I know. will. <laughs> can you, so can you remember you know the first project that you worked on um after leaving university and what it was like Right. Oh, that's a very good question. I remember my first project was uh, an office building. So I moved to Bristol um, straight after university to join an incredible company called Arrow. And my boss was just the most amazing person ever in terms of exposing me to lots of different projects and different ways of thinking of solutions to problems. Um, And I remember the first one was an office building. It was a council office building. And I remember him just breaking everything into tiny bits to say, actually, do you know what? Why don't you just rethink how you supply water to this building? You know, why don't you just rethink how you, um, you know, supply uh, reusable water or collect water from rain and clean it up and provide it to this building. That was really amazing. I mean, the projects I worked on after that, like were a bit more fun (laughs) because they became school projects. They became hotel projects. They became um, airports and train stations. Um, But literally, um, yeah, I remember that project because it was just like, boom, wow. Actually, I can think of different ways to come up with solutions on a standard building, you know? That's amazing. Now, so fast forward and, you know, you've you've had so many achievements and accolades, you know, do, but do you still meet people who are surprised when you tell them you're an engineer? Oh, yes. All the time. <laughs> all the time i think i it's it's always really it's actually always really fun to see them go from that 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 to what (laughs) (laughs) 
because like I promise like the thing is that you know a black female right is not the image of an engineer that comes into your head right you know like you know like you don't think of engineer and think of black female right you know you know what I mean like Definitely. you don't like just go yeah <laughs> yeah so um people go oh oh okay and really I you know what like I I like the conversation that follows because is it's one of fascination and oh how did you get into it you know how how are you finding it um you know do you love what you do you know what is what does it entail like you know and I love the fact that the more they hear the more impressed they are that you know engineering is so diverse it's so it's diverse in terms of the range of projects and it's diverse in terms of the applications of the different concepts that people learn in school but what are you most proud of that's a difficult one but um in terms of well I, i'd say two things actually i'm really proud of the resilience i've built definitely over my career I'm really proud of the fact that I just am able to close my eyes to the things that I don't find helpful and I can keep on bouncing back, you know, from situations, from, you know, um, you know, working with people that don't really get me or don't want to really accept me. But the other thing I'm really, ex- you know, really and forever would be, you know, proud of is the fact that I've put myself out there to work on some incredible projects in some locations that I would never have imagined I would work in. I remember uh, a few years ago, I decided I was going to move to the Far East. I was going to move to China. Wow. And and work on super high rise buildings. You know, I I was like I'm going to really really put myself I didn't speak a word of Mandarin. I couldn't even use chopsticks. I could not <laughs> even use chopsticks. <laughs> you know, and I shit myself out there um and, you know just took this opportunity that came and worked on an incredible water park, a hotel resort. Um, I don't know if you've heard of the Atlantis in Dubai, but it's it's the sister Atlantis in in China. Oh wow! Um, yes, it, you know, dolphin stadiums, like lazy rivers, um, a, a super high rise hotel building, sustainable solution. Um, working with you know at the local design uh, groups and my local uh, design uh, colleagues, um, and learning all of the engineering that was really really very very you know um particular to china um and i i i just felt so proud of myself you know at the end of it because it was it was tough <laughs> i was working with teams all over the world you know i was working with the architects based out in the us so there was a bit of traveling as well there were some late nights because of the time difference um but then when i go on the website now to see the complete building and the or the complete hotel resort and i see people really experiencing it and loving it and you know i can see like you know that i might potentially be a guest at that hotel in a few years or maybe even next year hopefully when things are better um i just i'm just full of pride and excitement you know, you are so inspiring. You know, I can see why you got your MBA. But, what, <laughs> <laughs> but you know, what was it like when you got that letter? Do you know what? When that letter came, I thought it was a letter from HMRC. I was literally <laughs> like, I was like, they better not be telling me they're changing my tax code. They better not be telling me I owe them. <laughs> It was a brown envelope and like literally the only like letters I get in brown envelopes are from HMRC. So I was like, you better not be messing with me because I, I nearly tossed it to the side. <laughs> and then I was like, Whitehall. I'm like, Whitehall. I'm like, who's, who's, who's sending me a letter from Whitehall? <laughs> and then I opened it. I'm like, what, 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 what? They say to whom much is given, much is expected. And I think that's what it's kind of done for me in that it is just kind of inspired me to keep on going you know um and in so many ways it's been a pat on the back because we see the role that you play in ensuring that our world is a fairer place 
And to a certain extent, I like to think it's also the direction that this country is, you know, hoping to go in as well, um, to make sure that we have more engineering innovation. Uh, we make everything that we do a fairer, better place for everybody. That brings me a lot of hope. It does. And you know does. what? I think, you know, getting the Queen's, um, you know, getting an MBA or OBA or, you know, there's always been a lot of controversy around yeah. it and you know i've spoken to so many people and i always say how do you feel you know because especially as a, as, as an african or even as an african caribbean um mm. that there, there's there is that stigma around it did, yeah. did you find was it easy for you to accept or did you find yourself having to have that conversation with your, your nearest and dearest and saying you know should i accept this should i not accept it what was the mm. process like the thing that just came to mind so clearly in my thoughts was, I am a global citizen. I'm part of a movement of young people wanting to bring change to our world. Very true. And, you know, a lot of people in this country are part of that community as well. You know, and, I, and what I can kind of see is an amassing of that ambition you know, it growing and growing and growing, you know, kind of, you know, leveling out, right, you know, and just making sure that more people think that way. And in that thought, I had full confidence in transformation, you know, transformation in terms of the way, you know, this country responds to stuff, transformation in terms of the way it accepts what is done, you know, in years gone by, you know. Um, and I just said to myself, I, I, I'm going to represent the new Britain. And, and purely on that basis, um, I decided to accept it. That's, no, that's, that's, how can I put it? It's, it's an amazing way of actually looking at it and having that discussion because I, I, I find on so many different occasions, I do talk to myself sometimes and you have to and it is it's, it's saying well actually i'm part of a global community you know mm -hmm. and that leads me on to you know you're, you're an ambassador you're a mentor you know how important are these roles for you it, it, it's so important because you know so many times young people say you know we don't see anybody like us like young females even females if you know just just think of all the different categories you can imagine we don't see anybody like us doing xyz and for me recognizing the power of representation it's oh it is so powerful you know just being in front of a hundred students pretty much can cause you know a ripple effect that helps 500 more people to see themselves being creative, being engineers, being the people that they actually want to. And, you know, for me this year, I've, I've really had some very humbling moments where I've received messages from people who, you know, gotten jobs after conversations we've had, who have started degree programs after conversations we've had and are happy. You know, people who come back to me and said, you know what, five years ago, you came into our school. I'm now doing a mechanical engineering degree at this university and I am happy. And that's a blessing. It's a blessing. And you know what? I just think I might not have like a million dollars in my account or anything near it, but just getting those messages and just seeing that, you know what, there are people out there who would be happy in their lives and in their careers is is more than I could ask for, definitely. Did I just definitely. hear a little voice in the background? Yes, yes, you did. Sorry about that. <laughs> no, that's it. That's fantastic. You know, because I think you know our children. Especially, you know, I was I was saying about my son. I think, mm -hmm. you know, I was in my career. I was so happy where I was. You know, working for the BBC mm -hmm. full time. But, mm -hmm. You know, when I had him, the game changed. Mm -hmm. It completely changed because. I wanted more. I wanted mm. to be able to leave a legacy. I wanted yeah. to build a safer, a safer environment for him, yeah. you know, yeah. and as a journalist, how could I do that? And I started mm. having to have all these ideas. 
would you say that motherhood has changed your it has yeah. <laughs> yeah. it really has I've got a three-year-old daughter she's three going on 18 the kind of conversation oh yes she, yeah, I, just, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know what I was getting myself into when she came along you know I I, I just think I, I just kind of like I, I had this super fast pace. I well it's, it still feels like super fast pace but but like the moment like she was delivered into my arms I just just thought to myself right this this right here is my inspiration and every single day you know with every single word that comes out of her mouth every question every you know um expression of wanting to do something or be somebody she wants to be a pilot today tomorrow she wants to be a train driver the next day she wants to fix things every single one of those statements continues to make me feel like you know what you just have to keep on going for this child you know so just like your mom did just like your grandmother did just like your great grandmother did you have to keep on going for this child um and yeah huge inspiration <laughs> I, the, the funny thing was i always say this to my mom i was watching um hustlers with jennifer okay, lopez yes. and yes. the the quote that came out of that that sticks with me it said motherhood is a mental illness yes <laughs> and it, <laughs> it really is because you, you, you go to bed thinking about them. You're constantly thinking about what to do. Like, it's non-stop, you know. Non-stop. And and the funny thing is, I guarantee that with... Because a lot of the other mothers that I've spoken to as well, we've said the same thing. We have actually achieved more as parents than we yeah. did before they came along. Because you just wonder where this time came from. <laughs> and you're like... That's so true. I need That's to do so this. True. I need to do this. I'm going to do that. And it's amazing what it does to it just does to you. So I mean, obviously, you know, in hustlers it says it's a mental illness, but it's a mental illness in a positive way. It really is. Yeah, it is without a doubt. Without a doubt. My final question, it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you, Andy, but my final question is what advice would you give to young women, especially young black women who were thinking about a career in engineering or, or maybe who aren't even thinking about engineering? Oh, do you know what? I would say the time is now. You know, if anybody has told you that engineering is not for, you know, young people, for young girls, I would say the time is now to really flip that narrative. Um, I would say it's a wonderful opportunity to change the world, whether it's in our built environment, whether it's how we travel, whether it's how we um, ensure that there are less people in poverty in our world, whether it's, you know, around safer health care and safer, safer, you know, social amenities for people in our world. Engineering plays a massive, massive part in really coming about those tangible the word there is tangible and practical solutions. So if you feel you want to be part of changing the world, if you feel you want to be part of bringing the color and the vibe and the excitement to the incredible planet that we live in, um, I'll say consider engineering, please. <laughs> please do. Please do. Because we need you as well. We need you and we need people who look like me. More people who look like me, please. So come along. <laughs> <laughs> That was Yawande Akinola talking about receiving an MBA for her work, her desire to get many more kids into the field and the aspirations of motherhood and how wonderfully she spoke on these issues. In our next episode, I am joined by manufacturing engineer Ying Wang Lo on The Face of Engineering.